Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Masood Olia, and I'm a professor in School of Engineering in the uh, Mechanical Engineering program and uh, at Wentworth University. I'm here with another example uh, of rigid body kinetics. Uh, so here we have this slender rod whose mass is given to be 20 kilograms and the length is four meters. So the center of gravity would be right in the, uh, the center of it. And uh, it's uh, attached to two sliders where the mass of these sliders, these colors are negligible. And we have a force which is initiating the motion, a 50 Newton force applied at A. We're going to neglect friction. And what we are trying to find, and you see this angle 30 degrees formed, uh, we want to find actually the acceleration of the bar of the slender rod or a slender bar, and also reactions that are developed at A and B. These would be the normal reactions exerted by these uh, horizontal slots on uh, colors A and B. Okay, so here I put down that this is a pure translational problem. The only way that, the, the, the only motion that this bar, this slender rod, or bar can have is pure translational. And this angle 30 degrees is not going to change. By the way, these two raw, uh, you know, slots are in the same plane. All right, so they're not like that. They are in the same plane. Okay, so a 50 Newton force is applied, so finding acceleration. This is really a trivial problem. Like any kinetic problems, the first thing you have to do is to draw a free body diagram. So we're gonna start with the weight of this. So we say, okay, the weight is what? 20 kilograms times 9.81. Unfortunately, this is a metric system, which makes things much easier. So 196.2 Newtons. So I'm gonna put that right here. And then just show you that there would be a normal reaction. I'm gonna call it NA here, and one reaction here at B and B, right? And then of course there is no friction. So basically that's it, that's your free body diagram with two unknowns here in this free body diagram. So you, uh, we know that for rigid body motion, the, the equations of motion are as follows. So for any rigid body, uh, rotating and translating at the same time, the general equations are, uh, some of the forces in X must be equal to mass times acceleration in the X part acceleration of the center of mass. So in general, if you have a rigid body that is rotating and its center of mass has some acceleration, which we call it A bar. A bar is actually A sub G, right? So here A bar X would be the X component of acceleration of that center of gravity. And then in the Y direction, same story, right? And then of course the, the important equation is that if you take moment about G, which is the center of gravity, that's equal to I bar G or just I bar times alpha. So bar here basically means the mass moment of inertia with respect to the axis that passes through G. Of course, in this problem, since this is a pure translational problem, alpha is zero, there's no rotation involved. Therefore, the right-hand side of this equation for us is gonna be zero. So we don't even have to bother calculating or determining the I sub G. Now I sub G or I bar for a slender rod, uh, if it's rotating about its uh, you know, centroidal axis, you can get that from the table, 112 ml squared, but it's going to be irrelevant for this problem since alpha is zero. So let's go ahead and apply these equations one by one. I start with the uh, sum of the forces in the X direction equal MA bar X. Keep in mind that we have to always refer to our free body diagram. So look at the free body diagram. The only force we have here in the X is the 50 Newtons. That's it. Mass is 20 kilograms, right? 
Therefore, a bar x, which is the acceleration of the whole rod, regardless of which point, because obviously this is pure translation. So acceleration of g is going to be uh, this two and a half that I calculated for you, meters per second square, and that's acceleration of a and acceleration of b. So that answers the first question, what is the acceleration of the bar? Now, we also have to find Na and Nb, so we can apply our other equations. What equations? Well, we'll use this equation now. Some of the forces in y equal ma bar y. Now, if we look at our free body diagram in the y direction, we have Na and Nb, both going in the positive direction based on our reference here. And then we have the weight, right? And of course, the acceleration, so the mass is 20 kilograms. There is no acceleration in the y direction. This guy is only accelerating in the x direction. Therefore, basically, you're saying that this system, this rod, is in equilibrium in the y direction. So cleaning up the equation, we get this. So now we finally apply our last equation, taking a moment about g equal to i bar or i g alpha. Pick a direction for yourself. I'll pick counterclockwise to be positive. So according to this free body diagram, I start with the 50. 50, you could see in this picture that these distances, this distance is going to be what? This length is 2 because half of, you know, half of 4, right? And this angle is also 30 degrees, right? So this would be 2 sine 30. We need that distance, and this is going to be 2 cosine 30, right? Cosine 30, right? Okay, so the moment of the 50 is going to be going clockwise about g, so that would be, uh, I'll write it down here since I need more room. So 50 times uh, 2 sine 30, that's going negative. Na, it's also going to go clockwise, but you have to multiply it by uh, 2 cosine 30. All right. And then finally, the moment of, of course, uh, weight is right through G, doesn't have any moment. And then that leaves us NB, which is going counterclockwise, right? And that's the same distance here uh, as 2 cosine 30 right here, right? Same as this one. So... 2 cosine 30, but that's going positive, equal, alpha is 0, pure translational motion. Mm. Oh. Set that equals 0. I think probably the easiest way to solve this problem is to divide by the 2 uh, uh, cosine 30. That way we can get rid of uh, these terms, and then of course, if you divide by 2 cosine 30 on this side, you're still going to get 0. So we end up getting minus Na plus Nb, and that's the advantage. So this becomes actually a positive 50 if you take it to the other side, tangent 30. You have written down here 50 tangent 30 should be 28.87, right? So the two equations that we have, if I line them up for you, show you qu how quickly you can solve these two. So one equation is right here. Na plus Nb is 196.2. The other equation I just got, minus Na plus Nb equal 28.87. So just add these two equations. If you add, right, Na minus Na is gone. So we get 2Nb equal 196.2 plus 28.87, whatever that comes out to be divided by 2. So NB, according to my calculation here, becomes 112.53 newtons. That's the reaction here at acting on that color. And then similarly, NA can be determined by just subtracting this from 196.2, because remember, the sum has to be equal to the weight. So that will leave us an 83.67 uh, Newton at B. 
By the way, this is not the only way that you can solve this problem. You could also use the effective force diagram if you want and not necessarily take moment about G. In other words, you could take moment, for example, about uh, A, but then you have to be careful that that's equal to some of the effective moment about A, which is another way that you can solve this problem. Uh, but that requires drawing an effective uh, diagram uh, in addition to the uh, free body diagram. Okay, so I hope you like this video. As usual, if you're interested in more videos, you can subscribe and um, uh, would appreciate if you like the, uh, like the video. And I'll come up with new videos, uh, uh, you know, on, on a weekly basis. Thanks again.